My name is John Donaldson. I'm an associate professor of uh, political science here in the School of Social Sciences at Singapore Management University. One of the exciting things about living in Singapore is that you're in Asia. Asia is a very dynamic uh, kind of a place. And e but even though Asia is developing uh, very quickly, there's a lot of people who are being uh, left behind. And that becomes the issue of uh, the relationship between development and poverty, which is what I study. Uh, my first uh, love is uh, to try to understand China. And I think like any kind of inquiry, when you look at China, uh, you start out with six questions and you end up with 600 uh, questions. Uh, you learn a lot of things that you didn't even know you didn't know. Uh, and so China is always an interesting and fascinating place. When people think about China, particularly here in Asia, we think about Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, uh, some of the tourist uh, spots maybe. Relatively prosperous places. In the back of our head, we know that there's a lot of uh, um, poverty in China uh, as well, something that the government is really prioritizing, uh, uh, but still uh, uh, persists till today. And so it's that dynamic that I'm really interested in, how the developed part of China and how the poor part of China, how they interact together and what actually makes a difference in terms of, of reducing poverty. One of the really interesting things about China is that it's because it's decentralized, a lot of the local governments have uh, been able to implement their own policies. Some of the more innovative ones uh, have actually done some interesting things on poverty. Uh, uh, trying, and so that, what, what that creates is uh, China becomes kind of, an, uh, kind of a laboratory. Different areas have tried different things, and you get a chance to see what works and, 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 and what doesn't in terms of trying to reduce poverty. So when people ask me what I research, it's actually less about poverty and more about anti-poverty, trying to figure out how to address uh, and reduce poverty. Poverty people often think of as an economic issue, but as a political scientist, I take a different kind of, kind of a slant than my colleagues in economics or even my colleagues in sociology uh, might take. I think of politics as more than just about policy making, although that becomes very important, the role of the government. But really, poverty uh, uh, and politics are intertwined because politics is ultimately about power. It's uh, ultimately about who gets what, when and how, one of the classic definitions of, of politics. And if we think about politics as that way, not just people in parliament discussing what kinds of policies we should be implementing, but what goes on in the ground and how those policies are implemented and also not just government, but the non-government sector as well, uh, then uh, poverty takes on a completely different uh, dimension. Poverty is ultimately not about money. Money is a symptom and it may be an indicator, but just like if I was sick and I took my temperature, that, that, that thermometer would indicate how sick I was, but it doesn't say what causes the sickness. And so we're trying to figure out what are the root causes of poverty and politics is usually at least part of that mix. When I was a kid, my parents taught me, not explicitly, but in almost everything that they do, is that part of being a citizen is to understand the world and to make it our responsibility. It's the problems of the world are not somebody else's responsibility, it's our responsibility. Not that we're going to save the world, but that we need to be able to do our bit. Uh, not to pressure others to do their bit, but to lead by example. Part of what I can do is to understand poverty better and also engage my students in meaningful discussions. We start with statistics, but it doesn't end there. The statistics, which are often quoted and sometimes get lost, 20% of the world lives on less than $1.25 a day. About 40% of the world lives on less than $2 a day. And then the ironic thing about that, the numbers as large as they are, is that that does not include urban poverty at all. And so I ask, you know, are there poor people in Singapore? And my students say, yes, of course there are. But those are missing from those statistics because nobody in Singapore can live on $2 a day. This is really an indicator of rural poverty, not of urban poverty. So it's missing all of urban poverty. And then how multidimensional poverty is. And then what also gets them is that According to UNICEF, if today is an average day, 16,000 children under age of five will die per day. And most of these are 
due to causes related to poverty. All of them, except for one, are things that technically are easy to solve. We know how to solve them, so it's not an issue of science. All of them are extremely inexpensive to solve, so it's not an issue of economics. And yet, that number is going down, but 16,000 a day, that should be a headline every single day. And it's not, because it happens every single day. And so it has to be an issue of politics. So part of my job is to get, unpack those statistics and to try to figure out what really makes a difference on people's lives. And so I need to figure out every day, if every day, you have 16,000 children dying, mostly from issues related to poverty, what am I gonna do this day to make a difference? I realize I can't save them but I have to play my part, and that's what drives me.